I'm trying to, to play this as smart as possible just because we, this is a pretty small fleet that we have for, for taking this system. So we can't make, we can't make too many mistakes. Welcome back, everybody, to X4 Foundations. I'm an old guy gaming, and the main goal for this episode is that we're going to take our fleet here and do a push into Fires of Defeat and try and clear the Xenon out of here um, and open up this pathway here into uh, Free Families, and then we're going to move right on into Tharka's Ravine 14 and try and clear the Xenon out of here. Uh, lots of stuff to get you guys caught up on. I've spent many, many, many hours off camera uh, between the last episode and this episode. Uh, just working on the game, working on my empire. Um, so I'm going to give you kind of the short version of uh, what's happened. So let's start, first of all, over here in uh, Herit... Uh, no, not Heretics Inn, sorry. Uh, Family Zen. So... Uh, the, the Xenon would just, they just were relentless. They just kept coming through here, setting up stations. Uh, I'd have to come back, blow them up, and then I'd go get staged for the run into Fires of Defeat. They'd set up another station. I'd have to run back, blow them up, and I finally got tired of it. So, uh, what I did was I went ahead and set up a, a defense platform. Um, so we've got the, you know, the, the cross defense platform. Uh, right about 10 kilometers out from the gate. And once we did that, that slowed them way down. It doesn't completely stop them, but it's made a huge difference in, you know, the Xenon encroaching here into uh, Zyarth territory. Uh, nobody's bothered to do anything with Wretched uh, Skies 4 since I cleared it out. Um, Wretched Skies 5 is doing okay. And the Paranid uh, are doing a pretty good job of protecting Wretched Skies 10 uh, and not letting the, the Xenon come through on this end, which is great. Um, they do have... Well, th those are Terran Intervention Corps. Oh, that's interesting. Uh, the Terran came up here. Okay, I mean, I'll take all the help I can get with keeping the Xenon at bay. So I'm not really too concerned about the western end, and I'm no longer concerned about the southern end but we still have this huge Matrix 598 up here, a very big Xenon system. And um, they have uh, a couple of times attempted to come down here and set up a station, which I've had to go, you know, blow up. So I still have to keep an eye on, on Family Crit. And uh, they also will come in, well, they've, they've done it again. Uh, they, they keep trying to come in through Dominion 1 and setting up... Uh, a platform. Uh, so, yeah, we're going to have to deal with that. We don't want to let, let that get out of control. So, okay, so let's do this then. We're in two grand. I'm going to hop out of the, the cockpit here and send the, the fleet back up there You yet, yet again <laughs> to take this station out. Um, so while they're on their way to do that, I'm going to, here, let's remove this fly and wait command. Uh, I'm going to show you a couple, uh, some other things that we've done. So let's go down to Reavers Fortune 4, which is what I decided to name our sector here. Uh, so, yep, you can see it's now Reavers Fortune 4. Not sure why, why the 4, but well, I kept it because I, I kept it. Uh, okay, so I have begun the process of setting up a huge, um, what I'm going to call a building supplies depot complex. The purpose of this complex is to provide claytronics, hull parts, uh, solar uh, e-cells, and let's see, weapon, com not weapon components, turret components, drone components, field coils, and smart chips um for building and so this this facility here is going to provide all of our building supplies for all of the rest of our building projects for the re, you know remainder of our our playthrough here and um so i i'm i'm not even close to being done with it uh what i've basically done is i have um finished like the first uh i guess what i'm calling the the first layer here um, we've got lots of storage. We've got 
uh, two E docks, several M class and S uh, S class docks there. And basically, as you go down along this little spine here, um, I have put in the intermediate stations that we need in order to make the end product. And so the idea is that I've set it up in such a way that we can very easily expand um, both, you know, outward and downward. You can see that this is a very deep uh, plot here and add, you know, more components as we need to add them. So for starters, I just set up uh, two of each with a couple of exceptions um, uh, of these intermediate products. And, and they're currently working, uh, you know, and producing stuff just to kind of prime the place. But what I'm using is I'm using uh, the online X4 calculator. And it is uh, basically... You know, I've told, okay, this is what I want for end products, and it's telling, and then it comes back and says, okay, you're going to need this many uh, refined metal productions, this many silicons, this many superfluid cool coolants, et cetera, et cetera, in order to have, you know, that number or those numbers of things. Um, if I, uh, what I will do when I'm editing this video later is, well, actually, I think I can hold on a second. Let me let me just set up a screen capture here in Discord for or not Discord, uh, OBS. All right, so yeah, if you're not familiar with this website, it's xforce-game.com uh, station calculator, and um, I have already saved my configuration. Uh, so this is my building supplies depot. So let's load the layout as you can see here. And so basically <coughs> what I want is eight hull part productions, four claytronic productions, eight turret components, the four shield, four uh, advanced electronics, four field coil, two drone, two smart chips. Uh, and those are our end product productions there. And then after I plugged all that stuff in, then the calculator said, okay, if that's what you want, then of course, you know, you're going to need um, eight energy cells, six graphenes, five refined metals, one antimatter cell, nine microchips, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and also 35 large argon habitats because we're going to put in uh, workforce to, to increase the efficiency, uh, which is really cool. So it, it takes, you know, kind of some of that guesswork out of there. And um, so I'm hoping that, and, and again, this, the, the beauty of this station is it's completely expandable in the future. If I need to add more, uh, I can do that. And so, you know, I'm I'm going to be working off of this, but I still have to build all of these intermediates because remember, I only put two of each in to start with, you know, to figure out what their position is going to be. But I'm going to have to put in like 17 medical supplies and 10 food rations and eight quantum tubes and all that kind of stuff. So, so the next step is I'm going to get all of that stuff in. And then what we're going to do, okay, let me... Uh, yeah, actually, let me show you something else here, too, while I'm at it. I put together in an Excel spreadsheet. Um, hold on a sec. Just kind of a very rough schematic of the factory here. Okay, and so, um, again, I, I threw this together. And, you know, the, all, all the little shapes are not perfectly aligned, but that doesn't matter. Just I just needed to kind of diagram something out basically. And so this section here where you see the hull parts and the claytronics and the turret components and so, and so forth, that's all going to be built above the you know the 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 first layer here with room to expand even further upwards vertically speaking and even outwards to an extent if I need to expand it even further later on. Okay? Um so it just kind of gives you an idea there of what I've been working on. So let's, um, okay. So, so everything here, uh, again, all these intermediate products, you know, we can, we can build out to a point, but then we're going to uh, start building straight down. And uh, we have lots of room, like I said, to expand. We'll put the end product stuff on top, uh, another layer, you know, going this way, but on top, and we have room to expand upwards uh, as, as needed to. So this is, 
So this is my first attempt at uh, building a complex from scratch. I don't really count the player headquarters because the player headquarters was all, it, you know, it's already kind of laid out in terms of its shape. And I wanted to, you know, instead of continuing to add to the player headquarters, uh, particularly because I'm not 100% positive, and don't tell me in the comments, please, no spoilers, but I think later on something might happen with that player headquarters. And so I just, you know, I, I don't really want to add anything more to it. Uh, and that's why I wanted to drop the new complex. Plus, you know, um, we, this is our sector, so we want to build in our sector. Okay, anyway, so I'm going to keep working on on this off camera. And I will... Oh, do we have combat going on? Looks like it's just a, some small ships and stuff. Okay. Um, and, you know, I'll keep updating you guys on the complex as it comes together with each episode. Okay, the last thing I wanted to show you is I've done quite a bit of work... Uh, with my traders too. So now I have a total of 15 advanced auto traders and I've named them, uh, I've named the fleet that they're in based upon the space that they're in. Um, so I have three traders in, in Terran space. I have three traders in Boron space. I only have currently one in, in Zyro split space because it's still just two dangerous at this point until I can push the Xenon back and secure it a little bit better up there. Um, I've got th three in Talati space. We've got two in Paranid and two in Holy Order. We got one dedicated to Argon space. And um, each one of these traders is in a Vulture Sentinel. So I've, I've swapped out the existing traders and the new ones that I added uh, for Vulture Sentinels. And with the exception of Terran and Boron space, all of our Vulture Sentinels have a fighter a wing of 10 Nodan fighters protecting them. Entering system. Open um, market. I didn't add 10 to Terran space and Boron space because it's very safe. Uh, I, have, I, I have never gotten a call from one of my traders in Terran space saying they're under attack from anything, period. End of discussion. <laughs> um, Boron space early on before we... Uh, you know, opened up Kingdom End. There was some piracy up there, but I, I, I've gotten almost nothing, uh, you know, from Boron Space either. So, it, it, you know, comparatively speaking, even if it does happen every once in a while, it's still very, very safe in Boron Space. I was asked to drop uh, speaking my of cargo. which, okay, so Trader 5, he's one of my Talatis. He gets harassed probably the most because Talati Space has the most pirates in it. Um, so, let's see. If this is a destroyer, we're going to have to bring our strike fleet in to help. If it's just a. Um, uh, it's just an M class, then he can handle it himself. So let's go uh, bring him up on the map. And it looks like it's just a, a minotaur that's bugging him. Yeah, that's easy, easy peasy lemon squeezy. So I'm just going to send all of his fighters here um, straight after this guy, and they will they will deal with him in a heartbeat. Okay, so anyway, all of that to say that we're doing good. We got 15 auto traders. Uh, I only have 118 million right now, but that's because I've been spending money like you wouldn't believe, you know, to buy all these ships and buy all the fighter support and, you know, this and that. Um, I also have taken the cormorants that the auto traders were using and have assigned them to the trading station along with five more vulture sentinels who all, each all have their own fighter wing. I, I stopped bothering trying to name the fighters. It just, <laughs> once you start getting bigger like this, it's just too much work because, you know, you lose them, you have to replace them. Um, and so all of these ships are currently working for the trading station. The trading station is making me a ton of money. I mean, it is, it's crazy how much money this place is making. Uh, so it's doing well too. I can't, I can't keep the stuff in stock, man. It's just, you know, crazy. Uh, so for the building supplies depot, I have... Uh, seven, a total of seven large mining ships. So I have two gas miners and five ore miners or solid miners all working for the building supplies depot. And I was using the crane, but I decided to start going instead uh, with the, the hell is this thing called? It, it, the magnetar. And the reason I like the magnetar is because 
it has five combat turrets. Um, and so you take one of those, you go throw some uh, some Terran shields on it, and then put five um, flak turrets on it, which is exactly what I did, if we look at the loadout here. So it's got Terran shield generators and flak turrets. It can, it can, it can hold its own. I mean, they spend a lot of time in Nopilios's fortune, or Nopilios, or however the hell you say it. Um, mining in here, because this is a really good place to mine, but there, there is a cock installation or hive in this system somewhere, but I just cannot find it. I mean, I've flown all over the place trying to find the damn thing, and I can't, but there's cock all over in here, and I don't, I don't know where they are. I've gone down, I've gone up, I've gone laterally. Uh, you know, this system used to, the border of this system used to be like about this, and you can see I've expanded it quite a bit trying to find the place, and I just can't find it, so I don't know what the hell, man. Uh, but there's definitely a cock infestation in the system, so if I if I can't find their, you know, uh, their base, I'm going to have to set up a permanent patrol in here just to kind of, you know, uh, keep them keep them under control, I guess is what I'm trying to say. So anyway, I, I think that gets uh, gets us all caught up on, you know, all the stuff that I have done um, since the last episode. Okay, so what we're going to do is uh, we are going to run up, uh, back up to Zyarth's Dominion uh, 1. Uh, we're going to destroy this station, and then we're going to fly back and get ready to jump into uh, Fires of Defeat. So when that time comes, uh, there's a K right there, I'll bring you guys back, and we will go fight the Xenon in Fires of Defeat. Guys, we are back and ready to mount our assault on fires of defeat. Um, we have a P that just came through the gate and he's getting pounded. Awaiting orders. Okay, so here's what we're going to do. We're going to pop through the other side of this gate here. And we're going to set up... Awaiting orders. There's a, actually, there's a K right there. Um, so, yeah, we're going to pop to the other side of the gate here, and then we're going to kind of set up a blockade and wait for the enemy to, to come into us so we can kind of thin them out a little bit. I also have um, docked on my rattlesnake. I've got OG Scout with some advanced satellites um, that I want to... Uh, I want to place a few more in here. So I want to place one by this gate, one by this gate, and one right in the middle so we can really have eyes on this system to see what's going on. Um, I might also dip down into Matrix 9 and just throw one here too so we can kind of keep an eye on that. And and maybe one here in Family to Kerr. Um, but we know there's a K right around here, so we're going to have to... Why don't we wait for these this little batch to come through the gate and we'll destroy them before we move through. So let's do that first. Engaging. They're basically just flying right into a death trap here. Uh, there's a patrol of three Talati destroyers at this gate too, which is good because they're also making an effort to try and Keep the xenon from pushing into this system. So we'll just wait for this trash to get taken out, and then let's um let's look over here again. Okay, I think it's reasonably clear. So what I want to do, I'm going to pause for just a second. Okay, so let's have the Audi fly here and here. We'll have Osaka 1 fly here and then here. 2 will fly
there is good. Three can fly here and maybe point that way. Let's bring four back up this way. Well, no, because the K is down that way. So, all right. And then we will fly right about here. Now, I'm not going to keep these fighters on intercept. I want them to stay really close and really tight. So what we're going to do uh, for them is we're going to have all of you guys mimic the first fighter. And then I want you to get out of target turrets. Oh, yeah, that's from an old fleet. Okay, and then what I want them to do is I just want them to protect this area. Because if I leave them on um, intercept, they're, they're going to... Whoops. Uh, they're going to be a little, you know, more dispersed. And let's let's make this a 25 kilometer radius. Eh. Let's make it a 30 kilometer radius. Okay, good. Um, all right. So I think we're ready to advance. And hopefully we can get in and get in position before the K gets up here. And then once I get kind of, you know, all the ships in place uh, and solid, solidly set up in the blockade, then I'm going to jump in the scout and lay down the rest of these satellites that we need. I'm trying to, to play this as smart as possible just because we, this is a pretty small fleet that we have for, for taking this system. So we can't make we can't make too many mistakes. <laughs> we gotta do this right if we're gonna survive it. Okay. I want you to get a little closer and you I was asked to drop my car. Oh, not now. Who is it? Cormorant 8. Okay, where are you at? This is terrible timing. Cormorant 8 is in Grand Exchange 3. Who's chasing you? What? That's not Grand Exchange 3. Why is it throwing me here? Ah, it doesn't make sense. Unless he's just now coming through the gate. Yeah, I don't know. You know what? He's on his own. Just flee and get away. I don't have time for you right now. We got bigger fish to fry. Okay, so we were adjusting you to come a little closer this way. No, not that. Not there. That's good there. Because if if the destroyers are pretty close together, then their flak cannons will just decimate uh, you know, any enemy ships that are that are coming in. Let's move you up just a little bit. 
And I want you to come more over this way. Okay. That should be good. Awaiting orders. Pretty good position too on the rattlesnake. Face it, junk. Okay. So we gotta keep an eye on this big boy. But as these fighter groups come in, you know, we'll just we'll just clean them up. And uh Awaiting orders. I'm not going to send the fighters at all after the K. Uh, we'll just have the destroyers take care of them. In fact, I actually want to bring you down closer and you as well. Awaiting orders. So we'll we'll cut we'll deal with him first and then I'll awaiting orders. I'll set the satellites down. But I don't want to leave these guys Go here uh, without me being here too. Okay, he's starting to turn towards us. And yeah, you send your fighters after us, that's a good idea. Okay, so he is now uh, bearing down on us, so I'm going to give you guys a uh, remove all orders and a direct attack. We will also attack him and we'll let uh, oh my goodness, frame rate. We'll let our fighters uh, take care of the little guys. Oh my goodness. Oh, I'm still in SETA. No wonder my frame. Wow. <laughs> Awaiting orders. That wasn't your best move. I thought I had turned SETA off. No wonder my frames were so bad. Okay. All right. He well. <laughs> that went fast. My goodness. Uh. Okay. Are my fighters still in their? Yeah, they're still in their circle. Okay. Good. I don't want it to go out any further. Okay. So now what we're gonna do is, um, let's. Uh, let's move. Let's advance a little bit, but we'll still stay in our ring. In fact, I can move this uh, with us too. And so I want. I want to bring these guys again, close in so we can do a black turret barrage on any ships that come after us. Okay. Awaiting orders. I, I just thought my frames had tanked really bad because of all the ships, but I was still <laughs> in SETA and then the K like what just got disintegrated. I'm going, why is he dying so fast? Oh, <laughs> we're in SETA. Oh, that was funny. Okay. I thought it was funny anyways. Okay, let's get our rattlesnake over to its little position here. I can't wait till till we get a carrier and and start using carriers. I'm a I don't know if you guys have noticed this or not, but I'm a big fan of fighters. Big fighter swarms in this game. They're super effective. I've got a rattlesnake. Uh, no, I'm sorry, not a rattlesnake. A raptor all kitted out. Um, just trying to build up our money just a little more before we 
You guys... Oh, wait. Hold on. What the hell? Are you going past your circle? Alright. For some reason... These guys are no longer following orders and they're chasing, which I do not want them to do. Uh, yeah, same to you too. Quit doing that. I didn't tell you to do that. I don't know why you're doing that. You guys start taking off and spreading out, you're going to die. We gotta stick together if we're gonna survive this, guys. Troops, boys Away and girls. And I mean that literally. Stick together. <laughs> it's essential for all of us to survive. 